In this problem, we are given the following diagram right here. It is the periodic triangular current, and it has a peak of 180 milliamps. So at this very top right here, it's going to be 180. So we can assume at the very bottom right here, it's going to be a negative 180 milliamps. We're then asked to find the average power that this current delivers to a five kilo ohm resistor. We know we are given two things. We are given current and we are given resistance. So when we look for our P average formula in the notes linked below the like button in the description, we're going to have to look for a formula that has something that contains all of these. In the last couple of videos linked in the playlist in the description, I've mentioned this set of formula a couple of different times. Normally we cross out this one and we use this part and this part. However, we're going to do the opposite this time. We don't have a voltage, so we are not going to use this first part. And since we don't have a VM, we can't use the second part either. So the only formula that we can use is this P of average is equal to the I RMS squared times our resistance. And to do that, we are going to use this formula. Again, both of these are in the notes below the like button in the Google Docs. This formula gives us the RMS and it is equal to the square root of one over T. And then we have the integral from our time zero to our time zero plus T and then our equation squared. And then we need to derive it obviously. So we want to find our I RMS. So in front of our RMS here, we are just going to put an I and solve for it. We need to find our periods right here. Well, we can see that one period is from this zeroth to this T right here. That is a full period. And we want to find the area underneath each of our triangles. So we want to find this part in here and this part in here, and then we can add them together. That will give us the average power. However, we can see that if we divide these triangles up into two parts, this left side is equivalent to this right side. And the same thing for this part and this part. So if we just solve for one triangle and then multiply it by four, we have the entire area. And we're going to do that because it's easiest. We're gonna set our IRMS equal to the square root. And then here we have the one over RT. And then we have the integral from zero and since we're dividing it up, we are just going to get this point right here. We're gonna stop right here, and we're only going to look at this triangle right here. So it goes from zero to t over four. Now we need an equation, and this equation is going to be squared once we have it. So at our t is four right here, we need our i of p to be 180 milliamps. So we'll have 180 times 10 to the negative cubed, or we can just write this for the time being as our i. Well, this is being multiplied by whatever value we have this way, which is our t4. i is equal to t4. We're going to have i times basically x, because this is the x-axis, i times t. Well, we don't want our i times our t4. However, we are going to have it anyways. We're going to have i times t. So what we can do to kind of get rid of this is take the reciprocal of this and have it be 4 over t times our i times t. That way, if we plug in for this t, our t over four value, we are just going to get i. And at this point, we are going to have the 180 milliamps. So that's how we're gonna make this equation for this specific part right here. Now we're going to plug it into our equation here, and then we are going to square it, and then we are taking the derivative with respect to t. Before we go any further though, remember that we're only looking at one of these triangles, and we have four of them inside of here. So again, before we go any further, we need to put a four inside of here. We are multiplying all of this by four because we're doing it four times. So instead of just having one right here, we are going to have a four over T to complete this. Now, what I'm going to do is factor out the constants. I underline the T right here. And basically what I'm saying is that I'm going to move all of this from our integral outside because you can do that with constants and then just integrate the T. So I've factored out the constants and now we are going to begin integrating. Once we do that, this is what we are going to get. Now I'm going to combine all of the constants as much as I can. And then we are going to get this. Now we can plug in our t over 4 and our 0. From this we are going to get a t cubed over 64 minus a 0. So we're just not going to include the 0. From here I can cancel some things out. We can get rid of the 64, and then we're going to get rid of this t cubed. 
And then we are going to be left with that our i RMS is equal to the square root of i squared over three. And this is our i RMS. And we can plug this back into our formula. We're gonna say that our p average is equal to our i RMS squared. Well, we know we have the square root in here and I'll just write it out anyways. We're gonna have the square root over i squared over three. We found that. And then we have this squared on the outside. So what we can actually do is just cancel out the square root with the squared. And then we are going to multiply this by our resistance, which is the five kilo ohm or five times 10 to the cubed resistor. So rewriting this, we are going to have our I squared, which we know to be 180 milliamps. And since we need it in amps, we're gonna have 180 times 10 to the negative cubed. And this is squared divided by three times five times 10 cubed. And if we plug this into a calculator, we will get our answer. We are gonna get 54. And this is the power average for our problem. If you want more intro to circuit analysis, there's a playlist as well as notes that cover the entire coursework below the like button in the description.